guys and welcome back to another unfiltered gamer board game review and today's game up on the tabletop is called walking in province by emperor s4 games it plays two to five players takes about 20 to 30 minutes to play for ages eight and up and in the game you are going to be walking in province you're literally going to be playing down cards or card like tiles and attempting to gather specific areas on your board you'll also be doing a little bit of a drafting system as you're attempting to score points based Based on certain victory conditions and because this game has many different victory conditions it's always going to be different you might be trying to gather certain sets of these specific wheat fields and these specific forest fields maybe you're looking together different buildings like churches and buildings and these little uh, windmills here and so you're going to be moving around and how are you going to be doing that well after you place cards down you're going to be choosing to take a photographer this little meeple here or a drone which I haven't actually seen used in a board game yet so this is pretty cool and you're going to take pictures and and you're going to try and capture those pictures, those moments while walking in province that are going to be your objective. And other players are doing, trying to do the same thing. And they're utilizing these cards in this draft-like system as they place down while also using these see-through spaces to take pictures. The drone lets you take a picture that looks like this, and the photographer lets you use a picture like this. So he'll be pointing face out, whereas the drone will drop face down like this. And based on the locations and how you place, we'll determine what type of pictures you can take. And if you're strategic enough and choose the right positioning, you're going to be able to score more points than other players. And after 10 rounds, or depending on the number of players, will be a certain amount of deck size, and that deck will run out, you're going to tally up all your points. You're also going to have some victory conditions that will change, which I'll talk about that, that a little bit later. And you're going to see who has the most points, uh, most things in specific areas as well. So there's a ton of ways to gather points in this game. So a lot of different strategy. Anyway, let's go ahead and take a look down below. I'll give you a brief idea of how the game plays. Rather simple, rather quick. And then we'll come up and I'll tell you what I think about it. Here's the game Walking in Province and everything that it comes with to play up to two, two to five players. And as you can see, it comes with quite a bit. You're going to be getting your little player tokens here, your meeple and your drone for each different player and there are five player colors red purple blue green and yellow here there are the five starting tiles or cards that you'll have there is a deck of cards that's going to be based on the number of players and a deck that you're going to form based on that number four players for this deck here with the five player deck here which you can shuffle in if you want to play five players these are bonus victory points in the, the game that you can gather there's also going to be a majority victory bonus which are these cards here which are also double-sided and then there are the drone victory uh, requirements as well as the photography victory requirements you can score points uh, based on when you accomplish these goals if you all score on round one you will go ahead and put your little token here and then if you scored on round one you'd put your token here and then if somebody else scored around two they would put their token here so you'll get less points based on how long it takes you to complete these objectives but everyone can complete these objectives provided that they're able to do so and they're going to be using these things here so the game works pretty simply i'll go ahead and move these across we don't need these we'll just be starting with this here two cards in hand and we're going to do a draft we'll take one of these that we want place it down go ahead and pass the other to the left and then we're going to go ahead and place uh this one so this one's going to go ahead and maybe i'll place it just like this and placement has a bunch of different rules and whatnot but mainly you just can't cut buildings in half and of course, I would have a card because it would, would be one passed to me as well. Then everybody's going to go ahead and draw back up to two cards and continue. Now, before we do that, players will have the opportunity to try and take pictures by using the arrow and focusing it on the little meeple here. As you can see, you can do something like this or like this or like this or like this. And then the drone is the same way. And you can actually move the drone or and the meeple before choosing to take a picture or a drone photo of some type. And you're trying to achieve areas for your control or for your images. So for instance, if I needed to, if I wanted to gather this thing here, I would require these two buildings, this church here, the windmill, and one of these forests in this drone area. And if I was able to capture all of that, I would take my marker and place it on eight points, provided I was the first person to get it. And that's pretty much the idea of the game. You would go ahead and continue. You're gonna go ahead and place another one of these down somehow. But remember, there's certain rules of engagement. If you play something like that, you might suffer in the game because there's certain rules as to what you shouldn't and should do. Placing uh, the purples are going to be, you want to have them in combinations of the correct way. So this is better to do than this because you'll lose points when doing this. 
These little sunflowers are always going to be wanting to be facing towards the middle of the table, otherwise you'll lose points. And then you can score bonus points for having different types of buildings, up to 12 with a difference of four different types. And additionally, bonus points when you get these tiles next to each other. So if I had something that looked like this, this, and let's go ahead and grab another one like this, I'd score two points for the two by two for each one of these and only one point for every other one. So there's a ton of different ways to score points in this game, but not only just the main objective tiles. And whoever has the largest area based on this, these, these types here is gonna score six points and then or three if you're scoring second. And whoever has the most windmills can score six points or three. So you can score based on end of game scoring the most scoring, and then the pictures you're also scoring. And by the time the deck is going to run out, which is 10 rounds, you're going to have this beautiful array of things that hopefully will include all of these tokens placed somewhere on these objectives. You'll add up all of your points on this little this little notepad here, which is going to give you tons of little notepads as well as so you can tell your name and the different scoring and whatnot. Very easy to keep track of. And hopefully you'll end up the winner, like in this game, Callie wins, which is not surprising. This is a puzzle game, so she always wins these games, but 91 points, then to Grant's 76, and then to uh, somebody else's who's named Jay, 62. I guess I was too sad to play this game because I lose all the time. Uh, here's me, 54 points to Callie's 82. To V, it's 90. Yeah, I did terrible. Exactly why I suck at puzzle games. But this one here, no. Let me tell you what I think about it. Let's talk about Walking in Province. This is an Emperor S4 game, and because of that, it's a puzzle game. A lot of the games are puzzle games, and they come in these boxes here that are book-like fashion, so that you, when you place them together, it's going to look like a set, which I love. And I'm missing a couple, and I want them now just due to the way they make their boxes. So even though I've talked about the game technically, just talking about the box, I love the way they fashion those specific boxes because you can see the name of the game easily on the side. It shows you the number of the game, shows you what you're missing in the set and how you can kind of want to complete them all because it makes this little like I don't know what you want to call it like a book set like you buying Harry Potter right this game here though one of my favorites of the games that I got from them to try out I love placing these down here there's a little bit of a draft then you have the little placement where it's like tile placement or card placement then moving your drones and your characters to determine how you want to go about using these things here these little like transparent borders here where you're trying to basically use your little people to take a picture based on where they're standing and how you place is so important if you're playing this for the first time with a seasoned player you're going to lose so just be aware of that it's probably one of the main negatives of the game other than of course it's a draft and sometimes you might not get the cards you need based on the requirements on the table but otherwise this game shines and it shines so well because you have so many different ways to win regardless of maybe you're trying to uh uh, maybe you're trying to go for mainly all the drones, right? You're trying to score all the points you possibly can for these specific victory cards. And you also want to focus on using these end of game victory conditions because these can give you a ton of points. 12 points for having one of each of the four shops, which might not net you one of the goals down below as far as taking pictures, but that is a lot of points to give up to somebody else or to not give to yourself. And so you might want to focus on that as well as maybe these two by two squares or having as many of these purples in a row as you possibly can facing the same direction because then you can net bonus points with these end of games. Now, this might not be here, it might actually be this one instead, in which case that would change your strategy because there's so many different victory conditions and so many different ways to play this game. There is a wide variety of choices and different directions that you can go each and every time you play the game and still win. Another thing to note too is that there, because I said that you probably aren't gonna win your first game or maybe two games when you're first learning this game against maybe even somebody who's more puzzly advanced like Callie, she's just way better than, at puzzle games than I am. And it's one of those like experiences that I know is my issue because I'm just not good and I shouldn't get all like, oh, it's not fair, I can't win. But it's that thing where it's just like, I don't grasp these things as well as she does. And so the point differentiation was massive. 54 points to 90 points with, with Viet and 84 with Cali. So those two players who know how to play puzzle games and are very like accurate and choosing their spaces do very well, whereas I don't. But I still like this game anyway, because every time I played, at least personally, I was able to increase my score, regardless of how terrible I did overall. The game is definitely competitive, but you're not actually attacking other players. You're just trying to get your victory points and victory conditions sooner than anybody else does. And if you tie, you don't lose out. Everybody simply will stack. So on this one here, if on round two, you get this, and so does Kelly and so does Viet, then you all stack on here. You all get the seven points. No one's gonna miss out based on how you placed or how quick or anything like that. So it makes it very, very fair. 
I really like this game. This is one I would highly suggest you check out. This is one of my favorites, like I said, for Emperor S4, and it's something that I think I will be playing more and more. I played this on my live stream at least twice. We've played this four or five times on the first day we got it after understanding how it was played, and I haven't won a single game, but I still really, really like it. Now, Walking in Borneo, which I'll have a review for later, we'll talk about that one as well. It's another game that obviously Callie does very well at and I do not do very well at. It's a different experience, but has a similar feeling, which is kind of interesting, but it's enough to where I'd actually want to keep both of them, and I'll tell you why. But regardless, this is a game I strongly urge you to take a look at if you like puzzle games, if you like placement games, and if you like the addition of these really interesting maps where you're trying to determine how you want to take pictures and score certain victory conditions and victory points and of course the quality and the artwork it, it all really really works for me and it does feel good playing the game placing down these things and you do feel like you're moving around in province trying to take these pictures and use your little drone to take pictures i highly enjoy this game uh regardless of the fact that i just suck at it <laughs>